Hey guys, Darren back again with another Nintendo video. I make a lot of Sega videos, or Sega as you might say, and I think it's only fair to focus a bit more on Nintendo and some of the other systems. So today we're going to look at the, uh, the old NES. So in this video we're going to go through uh, two things. We're going to disable the 10 NES chip just so we can play uh, any cart. It's like a region free sort of mod. And I'm going to pull the 72 pin connector out, the original. Uh, give it a tweak, try and get some life back out of the original, and then compare that to a Chinese uh, replacement. So I've got a Chinese replacement connector here in a box. So we'll do two things. We'll try and refurb the original, and then we'll compare it to a basically a $5 Chinese connector. And uh, we'll see what difference that makes. So first things first, um, I've got this plugged in. It is all cabled up, and I've got a a computer monitor in front of me just accepting uh, composite video coming off the side here. So let's um, let's check a game in. Uh, we've just got the old Duck Hunt. Duck Hunt Mario actually. Put that in and we'll give it a test. That uh, The tension of that um, card slot was reasonably good actually. So it was in, it's quite stiff. Kind of feels like it's making good connection but uh, let's find out. Blinking blinking light and the screen in front of me is flickering a solid blue screen so yeah typical sort of problems you know blue or flashing uh, or gray or greens and yeah it's just not good so um, we'll re reseat it have another go yeah so that's no good so we need to refurb it So all we need to do is flip it over, um, and there's six screws. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So just a regular Phillips head, it's Phillips head number two. Uh, go ahead and just uh, pull those out, and we'll lift the lid. Okay, so with all those screws removed, you just lift your lid, and you're presented with uh, an RF shield, the uh, the tray and and so forth. I've also gone ahead and I've taken out the screws on this, and I'll show you where they were. And you just need to go ahead and take your screws out. So there's just two around the edge here on the tray, uh, a few around the back, uh, one down there on the edge of the the uh, RF module, another one down there on that side of the regulator, that one that that hole down in there, and then just various case RF screws just around here. So go ahead and take them out. They're all they're all the same. And then we can just lift the lid off, and we're left with the six screws that hold the the 72 pin connector in place on the on the tray. And uh, I'll go ahead and just quickly pull these out. But what's important to note is the silver screws are in that position there. They are on the the inner edge. So brass, silver, brass, um, and the reason for that is because these silver ones are much longer. They go right down through the connector, through the through the tray, through the connector, through the motherboard, and into the plastic base. So they really hold the whole thing together and keep it really square. So th these ones are extremely important to go back in that spot, not up there. So just keep that in mind, put them aside, and uh, just remember where they go. So I'll continue to pull this apart, and we'll move on. So with those screws taken out, the whole lot's now loose and you can basically just pick up the entire board. Uh, the cables are still attached, but for now, let's pull off the tray. It just slides right out. Put that aside. And here's our original 72-pin uh, connector. It's slid onto the back of the board. So the cart comes in here, presses down, and that edge makes contact with the board. So we do need to remove that. So we need to probably flip this over first, take the RF shield back, and then with that sort of disconnected, just hold on to the uh, connector and just pull that straight off like that. So we can have a look at it. It looks like it's in pretty good condition actually, but we'll go through the motions of cleaning it up. So put that aside, and we're also going to clean up the actual connectors on the back here. 
and then underneath we're going to focus on this chip down here so let me just get this into a, a slightly easier state to work with and we'll go through it right so at this stage we, we do really need to disconnect these connectors I don't usually I can I can just work with it uh, loose like that but for the purpose of the video we'll go ahead and disconnect them just so it's a bit easier so just simply reach under and pull out your connectors there's just three and then the whole board comes loose we can we can sort of put that tray aside and we'll probably we'll probably give that a good clean inside there so it's a good idea to do this uh, dust it out and we'll clean that piece of plastic with the others a bit separately and then we're left with the board so we'll give that a clean in a second uh, both sides and we'll do the chip so straight onto the chip I think at this point so I'm going to zoom in <clears throat> on the chip that we're going to target there's that one down there now if you look closely uh, just make sure you've got focus if you look closely it actually says CIC above the chip and it's U10 so locate that chip on your board it's probably going to be in the same position as mine and we need to focus on this front side of it so you've always got a couple of capacitors just here in the front so you can very gently just bend them out of the way not too far just a little bit and we'll bend that one out of the way just so we can reach in and find our the pin to disable so in a nutshell this is the chip that controls the region protection and uh, all sorts of things on the carts themselves and Nintendo Nintendo put this in place to stop uh, third-party companies just making their own carts but you know what we don't need that these days and it's a hindrance and it, it really gets in the way and it it's pretty much the source of the blinking light problem uh, as well as the connector making bad contact this chip has really causes a lot of problems so the quick and easy way to fix it and I'm not going to mess about here we're just going to cut one of the pins and that's all we need to do you don't need to get your soldering iron out at all for this you just literally cut it so the pin we're focusing on is pin four so one two three four you literally just come in like that with your side cutters and clip the pin that's it so then inspect it and just make sure that it has actually fully disconnected so mine hasn't at the moment we'll, we'll come back on that and I'll open up that pin so you know just with a set of side cutters or something or small uh, pliers just go in there and just just ensure it's separated and that's all you need to do so I think you can see that it's now completely separated that's a good angle there so you can see that separated not making contact and that's it that mod is done if you really want to you can bend these caps back but it doesn't matter I wouldn't bend them back and forth too many times you're going to run into problems there and they might snap so that's the 10 nest chip disabled I know it's that easy right so I'll zoom you back out that's all complete now we turn our attention to the edge connector and the 72 pin okay so all we need to do is give it a good clean uh, then you get your isopropyl alcohol in a spray bottle or um, however you like to buy it and ultimately you use cotton tips and buds right now I don't have any today so I've just got a bit of um, soft tissue paper spray the isopropyl on and just rub and clean the connector and we can see what comes off so pretty pretty bad There you go. Ah, both sides. Yep, filthy. That's it, okay. So once you've done that, that's prepared the connector and that's that prepared now onto the connector so the original one uh, it didn't work so generally what happens with these is the lower edge of pins here so um, 
to give you an idea of how this works. So to give you a better idea of how this works, the, the, the board back in this position and the, the, the long edge at the bottom, that would connect on like that and the cart comes in here. So over time, as the cart's inserted in and bent down, it just bends and fatigues this lower uh, edge of pins. And, and all we really need to do is either replace it with the Chinese one, which they, they do tend to work pretty well, or tweak this original one back into position. So just by lifting up each pin, which is it's tedious and time consuming, but I'll, I'll do both. So it's, this is still our original. Uh, let me just get a small tool, like a small blade, and we'll get started. Okay, so the way I like to do this is with a standard um, Stanley razor blade, basically. This, uh, this shaped one, not the square ones, because I like the point on the end. And all you need to do is, I think you can see that, is go in there beside each pin. So there's a bit of plastic, there's a plastic rib between each pin. So go on, obviously, the pin side of the rib and just get it underneath and just put a slight bend on the pin. Just lift it back up. Go back down in between the plastic and the next pin and just lift that up. And the next one and so forth. And that's all you're really doing. You're just lifting the metal back up a little bit. You know, like most metals, you bend them a little bit further than what you need and then they'll spring back a little bit. So give it a, give it a positive tweak upwards and it'll settle back down and uh, that's all we do. So we start from left to right and that way you don't go over yourself as you work and you just go right through the whole connector. So I'll do a few more and then I'll show you the final result. Sometimes you've got to go over one pin more than once to get it sitting how you like. It's a little bit fiddly. You just go, you got to go through it all of them and tweak them. You'll notice a lot of these connectors have a, a bowed edge as well, like it kind of arcs. So when the cart's in, that all settles down and it's straight, but you know, this one's actually quite bowed. So I think you can just see that. So yeah, the, the height of these things will vary. So take your time. It's, it's a little bit of trial and error, but I find that works best. So I'll go ahead and finish that. Then we'll give it a quick clean and we'll put it back in. Actually, you fill it with uh, isopropyl alcohol on both edges, which is uh, available in just little pump packs like this. This is a 99.8% concentrate, it's quite strong. Uh, it's a cleaning solution. It's like a solvent, just pure alcohol. And some nice um, kind of lint-free, just basic cotton uh, rag and I just this is just a rag out of um, a workshop bag of rags I just buy you know for five dollars or whatever I buy a whole bag of rags for my car projects that I play with and this particular one was a nice cloth so I pulled this aside and this is what I'm going to use to clean connectors and so forth so what you do is you spray on the isopropyl alcohol directly in you take a, a business card uh, wrap a uh, Wrap the edge of the business card into the cotton and just insert it just carefully. Not too deep either. Just um, let me get a better hold of that. And just insert it into the card. Not all the way, just a little bit. And that sort of cleans it off. Just a couple of times. Do both sides. Right, and you'll see, you'll see the, the the junk and dirt coming off and out of the connector. So, look at your white cotton, and there it all is. I've already had a quick go at that, so it's not that dirty in my case. But you know, if you were doing this, you'd do that process a lot longer and really give it a good clean and a couple of reapplications, and really go over it. So, uh, isopropyl alcohol is your best friend. That's you know, if you don't own some isopropyl and you're into modding and playing with retro consoles, you're, you're basically wasting your time. This stuff is a must. So get yourself a bottle of that. You can buy that from Bunnings here in Australia or an electronics store such as Jaycar. 
Um, okay, so with our connector, an original one, basically a very basic refurb on it, let's give it a go. And then we'll compare that to our Chinese one. So I'll do a quick refit and we'll test. So I've just put the board back in the tray. Um, I've just re-plugged the cables back in. and The RF shields aren't here. We don't need that for testing. And then we simply slide our connector in that orientation back on. It's quite, it's quite stiff, so get a good grip of the board and so forth. Make sure the pins are all lined up before, before you push it on. Make sure the holes line up, which they do. And then just drop your board back in. Grab your tray, uh, sorry, lift it back up a little bit. Grab your tray and with it, in that position, just wiggle it on and make sure it sits underneath this edge here and it's nice and flat. Then we can put the whole thing in. Um, it's gonna move around a lot, so I'd probably recommend putting, putting the two large silver ones in just to hold it, the large screws. Arguably you don't really need to, but I think for proper science process, let's put the large screws in just to hold everything together. Don't over tighten them either. And what that does is secures the tray to the connector through the board and to the plastic. So all four pieces are, are locked in place and it's quite rigid already. You know, this middle part will still move, but the whole frame is now rigid. So we don't need a lid to test. We can just go ahead and insert the cartridge. So let's do that. Let's plug it in, plug our power back in, plug our composite video back in. I'm gonna also plug in a controller and scrub our game. So we've got same game, uh, we haven't cleaned it, it's just exactly as it was. So let's give it a go. Yeah, it's pretty stiff. So I'll actually just pull it out a few times. Yeah, you know what? It's very stiff. Uh, this method of bending pins, I might have to, I might have bent them too far. So it's, it's quite fiddly. You've got to get them at just the right amount, but it's gonna make contact, that's for sure. So put it in. We're all plugged in and solid light and the game's running. So first shot, there you go. I'll just power it off, power it back on, straight in. So pretty, pretty good. Success rate's pretty high with that method. The downside is um, that is very tight. So yeah, not, not the best on that. I'm sure you're some of the guys out there are better at doing that than me. And, and to be honest, if I'm gonna go ahead and do that, uh, I'll take my time and really do it properly. But um, I did rush through, through that a little bit. But yeah, look, it's not too bad. It's starting to loosen up. Power it on and yep. I'll just grab the controller and go through it. Yep, there you go. All right, so that look, you know, that is all working. Um, not a bad way to fix your NES. I was powering back off. Uh, I think we're gonna go straight to the Chinese connector now and just see what difference that makes. So I'll pull this back apart. Just put the game out. Let's, uh, let's just take our screws out quickly. I'll just do this in one shot. I don't think I need to pause and edit the video. It's pretty quick. So I'll just do it. Take out the tray, take off the connector. Open up our 72. Yeah, looks pretty good actually for a, for a cheap connector. It's not bad at all. Um, just line it up pretty right. Put it in place. Make sure it's all seated. Put our tray back in. All right, that's it. All back together. 
chuck our screws in on the inside holes. I won't fully tighten that one just yet. Let's get that one done. And make sure it's all nice and square. Lock them down. All right, they're in. Let's grab the same game. Put it in. Yeah, wow, that is, that's tight. So, Chinese one out of the box. It's actually tighter. That's interesting. Well, so let's just give it a shot. We're not gonna get the blinking light because we've disabled the 10 nest, but you know what? Out of the box, just chucked in quite a rough install and it worked perfectly. So that is interesting. You can just, I don't know, I'm, I'm starting to think that it's just easier and more reliable to put in new connectors. Uh, you, you can definitely buy bad ones. There's definitely Chinese manufacturers that make crappy connectors, but if you trial and error a few of the suppliers, um, and I can post a link to where I bought mine, you know what? That was a five second job and it works. No cleaning, no tweaking required. So I don't know. Yeah, I'll let, let you think about that one. Uh, let, let's grab another game. Um, how about, what do I got? Another, another one here, Gradius, cool game. Um, so this is this is uncleaned. I'm, you know, I'm a bit reluctant to put it into a brand new connector. All right, so I just used isopropyl and wiped that out and just really rubbed the connector pretty clean. So um, I actually also sprayed a little bit into the new connector just, uh, just to help the pins make contact. We'll just let that evaporate a second. And let's give it a go. So yeah, that that's, that slides in a lot nicer. It's not bad. And on, we're obviously gonna get solid. And there you go. Bang, Gradius, first hit. Power off, power on, power off, power on. It seems pretty good. Uh, power off, I'll move the cart about a little bit. Pull it back out, put it back in, put it down, power on. It's just great, you know. I don't know, guys, like these Chinese connectors. Yeah, there's a lot of talk on the internet about... Yeah, it's playing in the background. There's a lot of talk on the internet about refurbishing your um, original. Let me just stop that game. Sorry about that. Um, there's a lot of talk on the internet about, you know, refurbishing your, your old connector and running through the tweaks but you know arguably that is probably a better method in the long term but you know five dollar connector box ripped open slammed in uh two screws bang works every time like i don't know it's hard to beat that so yeah i'll let you guys work out what's the best solution for you but you know for the purpose of testing today that this this chinese card hasn't failed let's try another game Battle toads, battle chodes, I call that. So I'm going to clean it as well. And we're back. I've just cleaned that one off as well with isopropyl. And let's, let's put it in. Slides in pretty well. It's a pretty nice fit, actually. Put it down, power on. And solid light. And we're good to go. Power off. Raise the tray a couple of times back down, power off, power on, straight in. So yeah, let me just um let me just take it right out again. Out, in, down, on, straight on. So sorry about the wobble there. I don't know. You see what I mean guys? Like you get a Chinese connector and it just bloody works, so I don't know. That's probably what I'm going to go with from now on. Just keep buying from this supplier until I find until I find that it doesn't work. If if their batch changes or you know maybe I've just got a good batch. But to be honest, I've been doing this for a while, like um, at least a year of refurbishing refurbishing nesses 
to sell on on my website and like everyone I've ever bought works perfectly. So I don't know. I find I find that the pin bending method maybe maybe I'm not doing it right. Uh, you can comment and I'm sure you've got some comments you want to say about my technique. It probably wasn't the best, but you know what? Why would I bother when the Chinese one works just as well? So I'm gonna probably um sell on all my original connectors. I've kept them all, but I'm not gonna use them. So I've got a whole box full of them. Um, I've got some left. I've probably got maybe like 10 at the moment. I wanna chuck them on eBay as original Nest connectors, uh, suit refurbishment, and let someone buy them and, and use them because they are still good. So that's something to look out for. Check out uh, my eBay store. All right, guys, uh, I'll put this back together, but that's pretty much the, the video wrapped up for today. You could obviously go into cleaning and I'm not going to show you how to clean the case and plastics. That's pretty boring. You guys know how to do it. So obviously take the opportunity while you've got yours in bits to clean the bottom tray, uh, just dust it all out, wash it out and the top lid, give it a good wash and scrub and get it nice and clean. And when you reinstall, you're good to go. So that's it for today, guys. I will leave it there. And as always, you know, thanks for watching. And I hope you've learned something or, you know, criticize if you want. I love the comments. It doesn't matter. So the end goal is we get our NESs working and running. And that's the goal, right? And I've achieved that today with two methods. Uh, disabling the 10 nest chip, I think, makes a huge difference. So definitely cut pin four. Um, use whichever connector style or replacement or refurb you prefer. But at all, as long as it works, you're good to go. So that's it guys, you know, enjoy your day, uh, have fun with the modding and I'll see you again next time.